This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles, on the Rockstar Radio Network. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms? How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd on the Rockstar Radio Network. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, top of the day to everyone. I guess I should say happy Halloween. And uh, there was, as I was coming in, I actually was on a flight earlier this morning and into Baltimore for a speaking engagement. And then I'll be going on to Philly for a conference later on in the week. And one of the things that I discovered and learned, and I don't know how I missed it, is that the M&M people have come out with a special M&M for this Halloween, celebrating pumpkin spice. And since I love pumpkin spice, I, I don't know how I missed it. So I have to go on the search to see if I can find it in the city. I don't know what all the goblins and gremlins will be out alike, but Wishing those of you who are listening live, wishing you a fabulous, fun Halloween. It is the adult holiday. And as we come to this incredibly uh, phenomenal October, unusual fall, I think, that we kicked off um, this year with just the weather-wise, but October is the big selling season for a lot of books. And what authors many times do not realize that what bookstores have in their stock, they've really brought in. They will start bleeding them out and show them for the area that you have them, um, you know, available now because a lot gets going on. But here's the big thing. What, what isn't sold now is really the core of so much of what comes out and is going to be popping in the holidays because, as you all know, they seem to – you know, we kind of glide over Thanksgiving because it will be heavily decorated for the coming, these last two months of the year, heavily, heavily decorated, um, and that you want to keep in that area. Well, what we're going to talk about is type of decorations, and it's called a celebration. We're going to be celebrating your book. What are ways that you can kick off? And not, not, I'm not talking about the Amazon bestseller launch, which is certainly something that, that I'll do a whole show on, which I have done several myself. I'm thrilled to say I've hit number one in my categories and maintained that for a few days, which is very cool. And to see books continuing to go, reviews coming in. But celebrations, how, how do you tell the world that your baby is birthed? Um, and, and ideas. So I'm going to give you a, a 15 solid tips throughout our hour together that you can start doing and creating that celebration that will really start putting the shoes on your book so it learns how to walk and move on, but also bringing in people uh, to where it is so, and, and, and find you and to keep those orders coming. So it's all about celebrating and launching the new baby. And some awesome tips. So let's, let's just start with, you really need to understand clearly your story. One of the challenges that I have consistently, consistently seen with authors is they really aren't skilled. And I think it's, it's not capable, because you are capable. It's the skill factor of being able to pitch yourself very clearly, succinctly, concisely, with catchy phraseology, a little bit pithy, that will get their attention. And, and the goal of a pitch, listener, or they think it. What? Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. And, and what most authors just stumble and struggle over, I'm blah, 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 my book is about blah, 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 the boring factor is going down, down. And they, they go into this labyrinth of how they put it together and all that. And what you want to do is when you do a pitch 
you need to think of one line. For example, I was uh, I picked up USA Today today. I always pick it up when I travel. And in the section, on the, the purple section, the life section, it was all about books today. And a review of the last 20 years, the top books. And they had the current list of the ones for the, um, the, the past month, so to speak. And in the description is one line. It's like what TV Guide would put in, or a description, one line. So when you're doing a pitch, when you get ready to start opening up about your story, about your book, you need to, the first element is you've got to be able to pitch it to individuals so they will say, tell me more. I want to hear more. I'm interested. You've got my attention. It's a critical element. It takes work. Um, I've always said it's so much easier for me to write a, you know, a 5,000, 10,000 word chapter than to get down into 100 words that will be then to 50 words, then to 25 words, then to 10 words. What's the key elements and components? So part of your pitch is going to involve something that might be unique. And let me give you an example. One of my clients who I had the pleasure of working with was a woman by the name of Rhonda Hartman. Well, Rhonda's kind of a pioneer, and uh, she worked side by side with a MD, OBGYN, by the name of Robert um, Bradley, and they created the Bradley Method. Rhonda was actually pivotal in creating all these exercises that supported his methodology, and there's classes taught globally using the Bradley Method. Well, Rhonda took her very uh, dated, and I'm telling you, dated, ancient feeling, looking, stylism, presentation, book that she wrote 30 plus years ago. And we gutted that baby. We redid it, restructured it, revisualized it, made it much more contemporary in appearance and feel and sounding presentation, and just recently brought it about. But she was struggling, struggling. Well, someone said, I, I think you should talk about that you've had five children by by natural childbirth. And I said, well, first of all, that's going to turn off at least half the people. And who cares? Who cares? And, and you don't want to have listeners to think, who cares? Who cares? But five was a number. And then she had three other pivotal numbers, five, 40, and 14,000. And basically, the first line started off with, what do five what do the numbers 5, 40, and 14,000 have in common? All right? You, 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 you know, tell me more. I've had five children by natural childbirth. I am the pioneer with 40 years of experience in showing women to have a safe and pain-free, drug-free childbirth, and I've personally assisted in 14,000 births. Now, you start opening up. Wait a minute. 5, 40, pioneer, and then you've got the, the whole eel of 14,000 is a pretty awesome number. So, everyone's going to be different. We worked with some other people with some other ideas, brainstorming them, but you've, you've got to really start thinking about that. You know, what can you do to do the hook? So, that's step number one. Now, step number two is you need to understand what your key words are. What if it, because you're going to also use these in your social media platforms, all right? And it's and you and you also step number three is get over resistance to social media because it's going to be your pal in your launch, even selling, celebrating with your friends and inviting in the public to come into the celebration. And you know it doesn't have to be closed; it can be open. Um, you use hashtags in any kind of press release now. You use them in any kind of, you know, any whether it's Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Pinterest, um, any in any Google Plus, any anything that you're putting out social media, make sure that you use a couple of phrases um, that are keywords and will drive it into that and opens it up into those realms as you go along. Now, what are some of the things you need to do? What's your story? So, what's unique about you and your book? Do you know? And when I say unique, what's the emotional hook? It's very important to understand that people buy, people are attracted to the emotional quotient. 
that you can throw out. So what's the emotional hook that you are bringing in um, with that? That's critical. Secondly, what value do you or your book bring to the party? And I'm talking about the celebration party. It could be a variation. But what value do you bring to the potential reader, the potential buyer? Are you solving a pain? Are you giving the answer, the solution? I've said this many, many times. Are you just going to entertain them so that they just are on this joyful journey and they can hardly wait to, to pick up your, your the next line? Are you going to throw out something that's just really deeply profound and you have these aha moments? What's the benefit to the reader? Be very clear on this because this is going to come into the copy that you're going to create to invite people to noodle in. Then you want to look at the next step, which is this. You need to ask yourself, before you, you design your event, wherever you're going to have it, whether it's in your home or a pals or a restaurant or down the street or the library or a bookstore, and we'll get into that where, you need to think, what's the last extraordinarily awesome event you went to? Really, and it, 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 maybe it had nothing to do with books. What's the last awesome event you went to? Number one, why was it amazing? Could, they, could you pull any element from that that would be worth duplicating that you could then weave into it? And can you tap into your friends to help create some of the components that you'd like to do? And is there anything else that can come into your head as you start noodling and you start thinking about that? That's what makes it so much fun. Um, as you go along with this. So it, it's exciting when you think, okay, well, wait a minute, I was at this circus and I loved it. Well, it's going to be hard to bring in maybe horses and elephants and, and all those other things, but maybe you could have some other things. I mean, I just, I opened up talking about Halloween. What about costumes? If you have a fiction writer, what about having people come in costume? And we'll get into that. That is your you, ideas. I mean, you could act out. You could act out sections. You could have scripts written out. When I was a speaker, I would actually have scripts or when I wanted to play act out and bring in my audience for interaction, I, I actually spread them out and I had a table. They all take, took a character on it and boy, did they get into it. It was a hoot. All right, so with that, we're going to take a quick break for the lovely people who bring us to you and I'll come back with the number one, which is going to be the noodle thing. I'm Judith Friles. You're an author you the guide to publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Is there a book in you or another? Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author U today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author U on Twitter at Author U and on Facebook at Author U, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author U, where the author goes to become seriously successful. sell stuff? Do you want to sell books? Lots of them? If yes, you must take credit cards, the most widely used form of payment today. The Free Terminal has created a special program for your guide to book publishing listeners. No contract, all equipment is free, extremely low rates, and no termination fees ever. Contact Alan Dean at Alan at thefreeterminal.com or call him at 303-668-6828. 
The free terminal has handled all credit card transactions for both Author U and Judith for over a year. Don't wait another day. Contact Alan at thefreeterminal.com or call 303-668-6828 and tell him you want the no contract Author U deal. Every picture tells a story. And it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and Book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards, including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evie Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival Award, and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303-985-4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Book celebrations. So we're celebrating new books. I want to tell all of you, I actually have a new book that is shipped from the printer today. I'm so excited. It's called Snappy, Sassy, Salty, Wise Words for Authors and Writers. And if you go to Amazon.com and just put in Snappy, Sassy, it's going to go right to it. Because guess what? There's no other title like mine. And isn't that the cat's meow? But Snappy, Sassy, Salty, Wise Words for Authors and Writers is 250 of my sometimes off-the-wall, a tad pithy. Um, Sometimes people say, oh, my God, I can't believe that came out of her mouth. Quotes that I've shared over the years, and I actually put them together in one of those little teeny books I've always wanted to do, 11,000 words worth, and it's a four by six, it's hardcover, it's, it's, uh, it's got a purple ribbon in it. Um, it, it's really beautiful, and if you want a fabulous gift for yourself, a gift for someone who you want for the holidays, I'm going to suggest you not buy one, not two, but three of them, because it's going to be the kind of thing, I want someone to have this. And it's going to not put away, you're just going to want to love it. You'll love the feel of it. And if you get one, email me and let me know what you think. And, and make sure, this is what you want to all, all of you authors, when people get your books, you want to make sure that you invite them to go up on Amazon, if it really does matter, and put a review. The more you can get, the better Amazon pays attention to that. All right. I mentioned you need to ask yourself, what was the last amazing event you went to? What was what was awesome about it? What stood out? What kind of fun things were going? What were the, the aha events? What were the things that were just so unusual or unique or engaging or people seemed to have a good time? Um, and got involved in. Can you duplicate any of it? And can you maybe get some of your friends to help you as you pull it together? With that said, the first thing you really have to do is really noodle the theme. What kind? What, what do you want a theme for that? And within your book, um, is if it's fiction, what about some of these characters? What costumes? I mean, look what Harry Potter did. Look at all the people who used to dress up to go to the bookstore at midnight to get their copy of the the next new book as it launched. 
So is, is there something that you could put together um, and, and tell people that here, you know, you could send out like a chapter and, and we're going to do this and you could, um, I, you know, I want you to, you know, come dressed as, uh, you know, Emily or George or whatever, and George is whatever the characters is, and give them a little background, a little color uh, about them. And so they can come with that. You could tell them that you're going to have um, some random readings and you want them to to be that character and read it and you actually send that ahead of time, write up the script and put it together. And when I did my, my actually my doctorate works in conflict resolution and that when I was speaking on the platform for years and years and years, I created several scenarios that I wanted to use to demonstrate bad and toxic behavior. And when I would have anywhere from one person um, who could be someone dealing with phone related things and dealing with customers or patients um, on uh, as one or I could have five six people involved as in a team and that it was fun and sometimes a little shocking to see people get into it and you could see the voice reflections you could see the body language shifting you could see a variety of things they had a great time a lot of laughter because I always made some punchy lines or, or I mean I actually had some lines where you might want to boo um, some of the behavior but think of doing something like that so characters costumes if you're if you're fiction mystery you could do a murder scene and put that together if, if you're a, uh, a nonfiction writer you could have uh, throw out a problem and then have people come up with a different solutions or you could have visuals people the problem and then you have you know you're the wise person and you're going to come up with some of the solutions but when you can show and visualize what happens is people start thinking oh they're there that's that's boy that's Harvey you know that's Susan that's fill in the blank so come up with an activity use what kind of colors do you want to frame it and put it is it for kids what kind of activity do you want to uh, go in that arena um, if it's a cookbook, recipes, we, we've had one very successful format. We have several of the Author You authors and my book shepherding clients have our, our um, cooks and they've created cookbooks. So we have done themes around that they actually have an event. They charge $45, $50 for it, which includes a copy of the book. Um, and they do a cooking theme and they pull it together. So people have it's an evening little vino or it could be a tea or it could be a brunch or, you know, whatever it is. And they bring it together and they can, you have some pre-made up, but you actually do a demo and have it together so they can see it using some of the recipes in there. And I can tell you, I went to one myself that with a client and I sat down and I'm someone who reads cookbooks and, and uh, sat down and, and read it. And I called her the next morning and I said, all right, you got a pencil out, and I ordered 17 books for Christmas gifts this year because I knew that people, my foodie friends, would love her cookbook. All right, so number one, noodle what kind of theme you want. Number two, and creating a really fun stiller event, create a budget. It's very important. So think of this also is not an expense. Yes, there's money going out, but think of it as an investment. This is the shaping and the forming around your book. You want to look at what kind of options you have. You want to create a media release about it. You want to identify that venue. You know, is it going to be public or private? You want to think what kind of food, drink is appropriate. What kind of favors or giveaways are you going to have? What kind of else? What, what resources um, can you get with people maybe donating or giving to to celebrate it? Um, and I can tell you for the Snappy Sassy Salty, uh, book, I actually went down to a bakery at my grocery store. They have a decent bakery and I had them make round sugar cookies and on and the main colors and they have a bright yellow and a kind of an orangey um, and a purple and one says I'm snappy, one says I'm sassy, one says I'm salty. So they became, it was, you know, a thing that would work with a dessert or it could be involved with a fall tea or, it could, you know, any kind of thing. But people like those kind of giveaways and it makes it unique and stands out. So that was something I did at a, at a talk I was giving on just the whole theme and how I set the book up. Next, you need to think about what are you going to do to push and promote and, and cheer for this? So 
know what your quick pitch is. Remember we talked about that. You need to, it's important for you to identify in the whole promotion scheme what you control and what you can keep track of. And if you're gonna do if you're gonna do any posters, posters work. If you're gonna create posters or flyers and you're gonna do public, you want to think within a five mile radius here because if it goes beyond five miles, you know, you it won't be there for you. Um, and so you have that into play. So think five miles for public. If it's private, you know, you've got a much bigger span. Um, know if, if, if you're doing a public event that you want to attract people who don't know you or maybe know a little bit about you or want to go with the, the crowds gathering, it's important to know where the buyer for your book is. So if you were writing your book, let's say you were initially working on your book, and all of a sudden you looked up and across from the table was your perfect reader, your perfect buyer. Who is that person? Where do they go hang out? Are they Starbucks people? Are they, uh, you know, bookstore people? Do they just go to their bookstores? Are they people who, you know, they like spas? Are they people who love a bar? Are they, you know, where are they? Because that's the kind of venue you're going to go, you're going to even seek out, but also that would be where you want to get promo up for letting people know. And always ask for referrals. Very critical to do those kind of things. Now, number three is finding that vet venue. And as you look at that venue and you bring it together with it is that think about bookstores. Hey, think about stores, other retailers. I mean, if, if you've got a book that deals with anything in sports, Man, there's all kinds of sporting, good, sporting-related stores out there that might think it's a hot patootie to have you come in to do a celebration, and what you want to do is to get a buy-in from them. Would they let their customers know it and bring it in? What about a restaurant? Some restaurants are a great venue. How about a private home? What about the park and go outdoors? Um, where else? And once you identify that, you book it. So again, you got to go where your crowd hangs out because that's going to make them want to come in and play. All right, and then your location. When you go look at it, how's it feel? How's it look? Is this easy to get to? Um, that you want to get them to ask for with support if they are the host, and it, is it going to be a cost? It's really important to find out what it is from the get go. And if, for example, if it's a facility that serves food, if people are buying food from them. We need to have a discussion. We'll have more on that. When I come back, this is Judith Riles. It's author you, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing, Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. 
When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. One of the things I wanted to share with all of you that if you are interested in doing a deep, 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 and I'm talking about a deep dive, um, not off a ship, but how about on a cruise? January 18th to the 23rd, Georgia McCabe, Amy Collins, Joan Stewart, and I are put together publishing at C.com. We only have two balconies left, January 18th to the 23rd out of Tampa. You are going to have an intense, tense, one-on-one laser coaching as well as presentations. Oh, there's plenty of time for play. Um, on it, but we would love to have you go. I can tell you the cost is $1,200 per person, and um, that includes all your workshops, your cruise, and if you went to the the, the shipping line, is uh, the cruise line is Royal Caribbean. If you went out to check the Royal Caribbean cruise on the 18th out of Tampa, you would find that all balconies are sold out, and if you were to go to an um, off-site or an outside room, you would have to pay $1,188 for the room alone before taxes and any gratuities, and certainly you haven't paid for the workshop. So if you want to take advantage of a phenomenal experience, uh, we've kept it small, no more than 25 people are allowed to come, there's only two cabins left, that means four more people can come with us. You need to go to publishing at com and check out the whole agenda. All right. So with that said, we're talking about location. You need to ask, is there a cost? And if there's food and beverage out there that people are going to be buying and they are supplying it, number one, there shouldn't be any cost. Um, and, and if they are buying it and if there's going to be, for example, beverages, uh, alcoholic beverages are being bought, I would not be shy here, and I would ask them that would they be willing to make a donation, a contribution, uh, put a prize in, help underwrite some of that. And certainly you always want to ask, will you let your mailing list, your Twitter followers, your Facebook fans, etc., know about this fabulous event? Number four, you need to know what those space needs are. How much do you really need? And you need, again, to know what will the host supply of anything and the supplies you need, what you need to bring, what kind of book layout you want to be. If there's a presentation, do they have any seating? Are you going to have to bring in any seats? Are people going to just, are they going to sit down? Or do you want people to be like a cocktail hour? Make a decision here because it's part of your planning. Number five is how do you build the crowd? Well, you start with your friends. Invite them. You start with your family. You start with the friends of the friends, friends of the family. You reach out to your coworkers. You go to any, if you're on meetup groups, or any other associations you're involved in, all your social media contact. You say, please, come, 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 come. Help me celebrate. Post an event. In Colorado, we have through uh, the print newspaper, the Denver Post, they have something called Your Hub, which is printed one day a week, but also it's an online community that anybody, anybody can go out and post events and activities. What about Craigslist? I mean, there's lots of things that you can do to build information and bring in the crowd. And, of course, those flyers and posters I mentioned. Number six of our March to 15 is how you create the buzz. Well, it's going to start with how about promote, promote, promote. That means you. We're marketing. Get over it if you don't like it. 
Um, ask the stores what they can do for you. Ask, reach out to all your social media contacts and say, hey, I need your help. I want to have a really exciting celebration. And, you know, if you're serving food and things, you're going to have to get some idea of how many bodies and mouths you're, you've got coming in. You want to have advocate marketing. What's advocate marketing? Well, that, that phrase comes from my friend Terry Brock and Gina Carr, who have a brand new book called Clout Matters. In fact, I had them on the show um, just this past week. And that they and, and I would encourage all of you to go and download it so you can hear their wise words, savvy wisdom. But that they, they're one of my what I used to call joint venture partners. And Terry says, you know, it's really advocate marketing. Who are the pals and friends who really think you're a cheerleader and you've got good stuff? And they have a ton of people who, who follow them that they will go out and do a cross promotion. You want to create flyers? Create those posters if it's certainly public. Um, and I'm going to make a suggestion. Make a huge, go to go get foam board, do a huge oversized poster of your uh, book cover. And also consider this. Whoever designed your cover, ask him or her if they will create a vertical banner. You can certainly do this horizontal, but I kind of like those verticals they're like five feet tall I mean you can go for six feet but that's big but at least five feet tall that actually has a little you know rack goodie that comes with they cost about with the, with the reproduction of the vinyl banner and the, and the rack you're looking around 60 bucks and you you have it standing up it might be with you it might be with a book it might be with a, a lot of different activities depending upon what your book's about but visuals like that are always very helpful. Number seven is, you know, what about media? Should you ask them? Well, why not? I mean, a lot of editors write. A lot of reporters have written or dreamed of writing a book. What about your local magazines? What about the community newspaper freebies that are still very prolific um, and present out there? What about maybe radio talk hosts? Um, you, you never know, but if you get anyone who is media connected or anyone who has a name, it's really a good idea to get photos. In fact, take lots of photos and, 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 and encourage friends and people with their phones to take photos and have them email you instantly with them so that you have in the collection because why? You're going to put them on your website. You're going to put them on your book page. You're going to have a special events section on your website around your book that shows celebration. And of course, you want to have people having a good time. You want to show them interacting. Um, it's so important. So that would be the next tip. Pictures, 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 lots of them. You want a picture of you signing a book? I mean, how about just one that focuses down on your hand and right on the page where you're signing it and you're putting whatever you come up as your um, tag signature? And by the way, I'm going to recommend to all of you, please come up with a consistent signature because people wonder, 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 um, you know, what am I going to say in each book? Come up with something that's very generic, and here's why. You get to pre-sign all your books ahead of time. Now, when people buy them, you can personalize them with their name, but it gives you the opportunity to just have a few more seconds of eyeball contact, of interaction, your own networking and building it. And it, it really does make a difference. And if you end up with a big crowd, you will be really glad not to have people just standing around you know, in a long, snaky line. I mean, it looks fun and it's exciting and maybe it'll stroke your ego, but the reality is people get tired of it too. They want to chat and talk and have a good time. And this way you can expedite it as it goes through. Take pictures of people being goofy. Um, take pictures of people holding books waiting to come have you sign them. Do video. And again, if you've got any celebrities or people locally who are well known, you certainly want to get pictures with you um, as well. And make sure that you post them, post them, um, whether in Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and, and LinkedIn and in your communities that you involve in on Google Plus as well as groups on LinkedIn. Get them out everywhere. 
um, create a blog around the event. And you know what? Make sure that you have a picture of you holding your book um, with the cover out, with a fabulous, wonderful, enthusiastic, oh my God, I did it, smile out there. So I highly recommend it. All right. What else should you do at this event? Well, tip number, number nine would be, hey, you had to be engaging and entertaining. So would it make sense to have a little music? Do you have some friends who who have the music gift? Would they like to do a little uh, improper, uh, improper, well, that could be improper, improper <laughs> um, little uh, thing that comes along that just, you know, has a little music in the background. How about some visuals? Do you have some visuals that you can show that's going on? Hey, and how about this? Have you made a book trailer? Do you know how to make a book trailer? Do you know about Animoto, A-N-I-M-O-T-O. -O. It's a great way to put together something that is uh, quick, short, snappy, um, engaging, and you could actually have your computer screen or your laptop or your tablet or something that's going, you could tap it into a monitor that it's going, displaying this all the time as you see these squirreling fabulous phrases and key words and concepts that you've created in and around your book popping up. So if you don't know about Animoto, certainly learn about it. It's A-N-I-M-T-O. There's a free version which allows you like 10 seconds or 10 slides basically. Bypass that one. Buy the one that's once a year, $50. It's absolutely well worth it. It has music and it has lots of good stuff that comes with it. So engage the entertaining um, and show that. Now, um, number, number 10 will be all about making sure you have plenty of books and boy is that a boo-boo that happens at a lot of events and making sure that there's plenty of books and so I always advise all my authors I have the pleasure of working with carry a case of books with you all times have a case if you think you've got a big event coming up you make sure you have a couple of cases. sometimes stores totally underperform because here's their experience they only sell a few books. If you've got a gang coming in, you want to plan on um, having sales there. You want to work backwards from your arrival date. Um, so, uh, and you always want me meaning when you're working backwards is that the books are there on time um, from wherever they're being sent from. And please, please, as we go into our final break here, make sure you ask for each buyer to do a review. How do you do that? I divide it up. I give a short weekly link, for example, to Amazon and go for it. We'll be right back. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Do you sell stuff? Do you want to sell books? Lots of them? If yes, you must take credit cards, the most widely used form of payment today. The Free Terminal has created a special program for your guide to book publishing listeners. No contract. All equipment is free. Extremely low rates and no termination fees ever. Contact Alan Dean at Alan at thefreeterminal.com or call him at 303-668-6828. The Free Terminal has handled all credit card transactions for both Author You and Judith for over a year. Don't wait another day. Contact Alan at thefreeterminal.com or call 303-668-6828 and tell him you want the no contract author you deal. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. 
Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And, you know, it's always fun to listen to some of the commercial sponsors' ads, and I'm so thankful to them for the Author You, You Guide to Book Publishing show. And as I listen to the credit card, boy, did Alan Dean save us a ton of money on our merchant account. Um, with his total printing, I'm just sending off a job then for ARCs. They do such a great job on the advanced reader copy. Um, for a book that we have just finished and it'll be going off and all of them have been just stellar for the authors who are members of the Author You community and creating books that have been multiple, multiple book award winners because they're high quality service providers and um, that's what you want for you and your book. Which brings us back to the celebration of this stellar book. So we just talked about pictures our tip, I think it was tip number 11, taking a, a lot of them um, in the process everywhere, post them everywhere. And I mentioned earlier um, in, in a tip that that signature is really your, your author graph, so to, to the piece. So a couple of things I wanted to add on to that is use a phrase that ties to your book um, or your theme, pre-sign them before the event, um, and then you add the name or sometimes the date um, or the event. Um, underneath your name and here's another thing use the same pen so if you've got a special color I love to pull a color from the uh, book cover and I just use the same type of pen because if you're pre-signing you want it to look look consistent but it'll help you and it'll bring you a little sense in the process all right next up number 12 is how about some prizes some of those giveaways I mentioned a little bit earlier you could give away some of your books for people you could have drawings um, you could give away an item that's tied with a theme. You could give away a gift certificate, and it could be a gift certificate from your favorite bookstore. It could be a gift certificate to, uh, you know, the favorite coffee shop around. It could be a gift certificate from if, if you have a retailer uh, uh, event, maybe from them. Maybe they gave it to you, or you buy it. But you could give things away. People like prizes. And then the thirteenth is, you know, have you thought about gathering names? I mean, how many events have you been at where they ask you to sign your name and your phone number or your address or your email? Well, why don't you have an author guest book? 
and, and create a bowl for maybe gathering cards and you could have them sign in or you could have, a, you know, gather cards and have slips of paper um, that people can fill out. You could have a sign-in sheet, but those get muddled as they move around and get lost. And, uh, and then it gives you the opportunity to follow up, follow up with a thank you for spending your evening, your afternoon, your morning, your filling what the blanket was. Um, you know, they, maybe a couple of key tips that you might want to give us some ahas um, from the book. And, and just and make a little note, you know, a little, uh, a little placard of some sort. Please sign, you know, our guest book. And um, it, it just, it, it doesn't hurt. Uh, that's, it's all about relationship building. And then the 14th, when at the, the purchase, I've already mentioned that I want you to have them pre-signed. Um, and you, might, you want to make it as easy as possible in payment. Now, if you're a bookstore, they're processing. If you're doing an event at a library, that you're going to be processing. So you have the capability to take credit cards. And, and if you don't, you are missing half of your sales. You have to make it easy. A lot of people don't carry checkbooks. You don't want to be being the money handler, but you can do that. And remember, if you're doing something locally, you're going to be collecting tax. So do you have your make sure you're covered in that area? And, you know, I would put out on my signing table, if you take credit cards, put out the little placard. I take MasterCard, Visa, Discover, Amex, whatever it is, so people can see. And I would also make another placard type that you can, you know, purchase your book by check, by cash, by credit card, um, and, and whatever works for you with that. So it's very important. Now, then there is what I, when you get to that final event, you know, your, your, your kind of your ta-da, when it's over, you know, when it's over, um, and I think it's a really important idea to really do, I mean, we call them postmortems. I don't know if you want to say a postmortem, but what worked? What didn't? Um, make sure you get bouquets out, you know, your verbal, your handwritten notes, notes out to everybody that helped bring it together and whatever they did. And so it's important to do that. And then, you know what? It's critical for you to do a kudo for you. Pat yourself on the back. Um, and I'm a believer in personal rewards. And um, I know that I actually had planned on, I knew I had finished this book. And I'm heading out um, for actually a, a retreat. And I write on cruises. And I was going to do really a repurposing of a book that I have been wanting to do for a long time. It's, and so I was going to have fun. Although it was work, it was going to be fun, totally different. And, and I wouldn't have to cook, which I love to cook, but I didn't have to worry about any of the care. I was, and I was on my muse, which is water. Well, because of a couple of, of crises with clients' books, people coming in, the sky is falling, I've got to do this right now. That I, they're, I'm actually taking them on the cruise with me. So I'll be doing a lot of their work and probably nothing on my own. But with that said, celebrating. Watch your celebration. I will do it often, maybe with a cruise. I will do it always with forgiving myself. If I was going to do any pleasure reading, it won't be business related. It will be pleasure. Any outside reading, I won't be picking up any book that it's not a client's book. It will only be a book for at least 30 days that is, um, I, read, I read thrillers, I read mystery thrillers. So that's my form of pleasure reader. So that would be my gift to myself. When I am writing a book, um, I go through and I have little mini rewards when I complete each chapter. When you do a big event like this, what's the celebration that you'd like to do? And it could be, uh, you know, it could be just, you know what, I'm just going to take the day off. It could be, you know, I'm going to do a movie. Uh, just a movie binge, and I'm going to watch four movies tomorrow. What, whatever it is, do something to do a celebration for yourself. And then I wanted to share this. I thought this was a fabulous tip. I it came from my friend Amy Collins, who has been on the show several times. But I call it the one-third of rocks. How about going to a, and, and especially this is something you could pull off right now. Um, in the as, as the holidays really do come to a, a really fast uh, approach here, 
is why don't partner with a retail or a certain group? Let's just come through and partner with them and just say, you know what, I'd like to be at your place on Saturday, blah, blah, blah. And I'd like you to let people that come into your store, this is a retailer I'd really go after, I think, aggressively. I'd like you that the people who come to the store and that I'll bring the table I'll set up at, I'll bring all the supplies, you don't have to do anything, and here's the deal. One third of anyone who buys a book, um, um, my publisher, which is probably maybe going to be you, gets to keep. One third will go to the favorite charity, and you identify the charity for, you know, I have, for example, the, the food banks of the Rockies. And one third goes to the retailer, so they don't have to do anything. Now they may say, you know, we'll process all of the the, the payments, and that could be fine. And you go along with that, or you do, and you tell them if you're handling it yourself. And again, make sure you have to take credit cards. You will say that you will be sending them um, their payment within two weeks. And why would you want to do the one third rocks with one third? goes to the retailer sponsor, one third goes to a favorite charity, and one third goes to the publisher, probably you, because it's just really a good thing to do. So with that said, that those are some ways to come up with a celebration that could be a little bit different, maybe a little fun. Um, and I know that I do, I do something every fall, um, not this fall, if you're in Colorado, heck, come find me. Um, it'll on my website and, and I would encourage hey everyone go to the, the bookshepherd.com we had a new website launch yesterday make sure you click on the very top of it it's called the hello bar and get the free full crowdfunding report I put together for authors what is it how to do it what are the key elements that will make you rock in it and successful and the things to avoid free. It's on the bookshepherd.com website. It's at the very top of the home page and you'll just pick it up there. One of the things I'm going to be doing is I will be having an author's fall team. So all several of the authors that I've worked with this past year, I invite them to my home. I send out invitations to everybody I know. I supply all the food and drink. It's free. What's the purpose? to buy their books and they will have them all set up. It's a good thing to do and it's something that I love to do each fall. So your choose to do is one, start planning your event, create a book trailer, know how to pitch and understand that social media is going to be help you as you start through this process. I'm Judith Bryles and it's your guide to book publishing. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryan.